Hi, welcome to the Rockport Val Retail Training Video. My name is Lynn Clark, Head of Client Services here at Val. In today's training, we will cover how to create a retail model from scratch, how to set up assumptions, enter income and expenses, set up the rent roll, including recoveries and percentage rent, set up occupancy cost adjustments, rollover leasing assumptions, valuations, view key reports, and run a scenario. At the bottom of the screen is the video progress bar where you can jump to specific topics within the video. Let's get started. Click on the new property button from the main screen. Enter the property name and select retail as the property type. The address is linked with Google Maps and will auto complete as you begin to enter the location of the asset. Click the create button to create the model. When you open up Val, at the top of the screen is the header displaying key performing metrics. On the left side of the screen is the navigation pane where we enter data into VAL and view reports. First, open up model settings and establish the timing of the analysis, which is starting in January of 2022 over a 10-year hold. From the model settings window, select defaults to data entry and calculation methods. Let's activate allow specific dates to change the date format in the rent roll to month, day, year. This allows you to enter a specific day that a lease begins or ends. Exclusive to VAL is the ability to model occupancy cost to help analyze the risk of the investment by identifying the probability of a tenant moving out due to the overall cost to occupy the space being too high. Percentage rent and occupancy costs is activated by default if the property type is retail. The settings here allow you to adjust occupancy costs downward or upward and downward and select whether the occupancy cost adjustment applies only during rollover or throughout the lease terms. Next, let's enter growth rates. The growth rates are located in the assumption section in the navigation pane. There are six growth rates within VAL. However, you can add as many growth rates that are applicable to the property. Everything will grow by the general growth rate unless you specify an override. In our example, the general growth rate is 3%. The vacancy and collection loss is an adjustment to the potential revenue of the cash flow, factoring likely vacancy loss due to market conditions. Let's enter in a 5% vacancy loss factor and a 1% credit loss. Next, let's add miscellaneous income. The miscellaneous income is where revenue generating items not associated to a lease is entered, such as parking and vending revenue. In our example, the parking garage income is $12 per occupied area, growing by the miscellaneous growth rate. Click on the unit of measure drop-down menu and select dollar per area and choose occupied area as the area measure. This will base the revenue on the occupancy of the building. Next, let's add the operating expenses to the property. To streamline the data population process, we will leverage VAL's copy and paste functionality. Right-click the line item in VAL and select Clone X times and clone 15 times to match the number of rows in VAL that exist in Excel. Next, select the data in Excel and click Control-C to copy and Control-V as in Victor to paste into VAL. Let's update a few of our expense details. Cleaning is 40% variable. Activate the variable expense column and enter 40 as the percent variable. The management fee is 3% of EGR. Click on the unit of measure drop-down menu and select percent of EGR and enter 3 as the amount. Several expenses are not reimbursable, meaning they will not be available for pass-through to the tenants, where we can toggle these items as no in the reimbursable column. The rent roll is where we model the contractual and speculative leases. We will leverage VAL's copy and paste functionality to efficiently populate tenant data into the model. Right-click on the line item and select Clone X times to clone 52 times to add the same number of rows that exist in Excel. Select the cells to copy and click Control-C and Control-V to paste the tenant name, suite, start and end date of the lease term, area, and base rent amount into VAL. The tenants in the rent roll are categorized by anchor tenants with an area greater than 15,000 square feet and inline tenants with an area less than 15,000 square feet. Rent steps are increases to the base rent over the term of the lease that can be entered as either an amount or a percentage increase. 
the anchor tenants' base rents will remain flat during their lease term. All other tenants will include a 2% annual increase during their lease term. Edit rent steps by clicking on the pencil icon, select the date type drop-down menu, and select relative. This is useful to be able to reuse the rental step variable across all tenants who share the same rental increase structure. Enter the start date is 13, meaning the 13th month of the lease, the value is three, and the unit of measure is percent annual increase. Val automatically saves data as you go. However, when in a pop-up screen, clicking save is required. Once we have created the rental step structure, we can click Control C to copy and Control V to paste to all tenants who share the same rent step. There are two default methods in Val, default base year and default triple net. Commonly in retail assets, the recoveries are more complex and will require expense pools and recovery methods to be created. In this property, the anchor tenants pay a fixed CAM and their pro rata share of taxes. First, from the navigation pane, let's set up the expense pools. Click Add Pool and enter CAM as the name. Here we can select which expenses are included in CAM and click Save. Next, we create the methodology. Click on the Methods tab and select Add Method to build the recovery method. We will name this recovery Anchor and select the CAM expense from the drop-down menu. Select Fixed as the recovery method and enter $7 per square foot as the amount. Next, click on the Add New Recovery button to select Taxes and choose Net as the recovery structure, which is the default. Open the rent roll and sort by area to quickly identify the anchor tenants in the property and apply the anchor recovery structure. The inline tenants will deduct the anchor tenants fixed CAM contribution from the CAM pool and reimburse their pro rata share of the balance plus a 15% administration fee. In addition, they will pay their pro rata share of taxes. First, let's create a tenant group to reflect the anchor tenants and enter anchor as the name. Include the three anchor tenants for the property. We can right-click the anchor tenant group and create an inverse group and name this the inline tenants. Click on the method tab and select add method and let's name this new method inline. From the drop-down menu, select CAM as the expense pool. Click on the contribution deduction drop-down menu and select anchor to subtract the anchor contribution from the CAM pool. Click on the Admin Fee drop-down menu and add the 15% fee. Since the anchor tenants are being deducted from the pool, we want to adjust the denominator of the pro rata share calculation to include the inline tenants only. Select the inline area as the denominator here. Select Add New Recovery and select Taxes from the drop-down menu where the recovery structure by default is net. Open the Rent Roll screen and select the recovery structure where applicable. From the Reports section, click on Audit and select the Recovery Audit tab to review the report that provides the details behind the recovery calculations showing you the pools, deductions, and how Val calculates the reimbursement amount. Next, let's set a percentage rent by going back into the rent roll. Val handles all the complexities around percentage rent, including changing sales, changing percents, and tiered breakpoints. Subway is to pay 3%, of $2 million sales above a natural breakpoint. Blue Mercury has a tiered breakpoint structure where the estimated sales is $3 million and the tenant pays a percentage rent of 5% over 2 million and 4% over 2.5 million and 3% over 3 million. From the report section, view the percent rent audit report for the details behind the calculation for percentage rent for each tenant. The rollover assumptions define the projected lease assumptions after the initial lease expires based on if the tenant vacates or renews their lease. The upon expiration field defines how Val will calculate the rollover assumption based on if you think the existing tenant will renew, vacate, exercise an option, or will go dark and be reconfigured. Market is the default setting, which assumes you are not certain whether the existing tenant will move out or renew and will weigh the new and renewal assumptions based on a renewal probability. 
Let's create the retail rollover assumption where the renewal probability is 60%. The term is five years, so you can enter 60M for months or 5Y for years. Downtime is nine months. And market rent is $30 for new and $25 for renew. Note the market rent entered is as of the beginning of the analysis period and we'll assume the growth rate if a lease starts in the future. If you want to have increases to the rent during the lease term, this is modeled in the interim adjustment, where in our example, we will model a 2% increase. Free rent for new tenants is three months, for renewing tenants is zero. Percentage rent will continue as prior, and we will enter a 20% occupancy cost adjustment. Note for the occupancy cost to calculate, the sales is a required field. Tenant improvements is $20 for new and $10 for renew. Leasing commissions is 6% for new and 3% for renewal. And the recovery structure is inline tenants. Let's clone the retail rollover leasing assumption and name this the anchor RLA, where we will update a 10-year lease term, 12 months of downtime, and a $20 per square foot market rent with an occupancy cost of 5%. We can open the rent roll, quickly sort, and apply the appropriate rollover assumptions in the model. Let's model the assumptions for our vacant spaces in the property. We can leverage the keyword search functionality to quickly sort for all vacant spaces. We have already estimated when leases will begin. Typically, the base rent for vacant spaces is 100% of market rent, where the market rent is driven by the rollover assumption applied to the space. We will add three months of free rent, and for the recoveries, TIs, and leasing commissions, we will select Use RLA, where the assumptions will be driven from the rollover leasing assumptions assigned to the tenant. The advantage of using this option is if the market assumptions change, that change will be reflected in both the rollover leasing assumption and the vacant spaces. Once I set up the terms of the vacant space, I can leverage Val's copy and paste functionality to copy the same assumptions to all vacant spaces. In the valuation screen, set up an unlimited number of valuations to calculate a DCF, direct cap, or purchase price to value your asset. Let's set up a DCF valuation based on a 6% cap and an 8% discount rate over a 10-year hold. In addition, let's add a 2% cost of sale. Click on Add Valuation to set up the second valuation, which we will call Stabilized Direct Cap. Vacancy is high in the first few years, so we will push the valuation as of date to January of 2024 and select Direct Capitalization from the drop-down menu with a cap rate of 6.5%. What's nice about entering the valuation sets is on the first column, Val will display the results of each valuation as entered. There are over 80 reports available in Val. We will go through a few of the key reports. The cash flow report displays the revenue and expenses. There is drill down capabilities on this report to display the tenant level details of each line item. In addition, you can quickly view results of selected cells in the status bar located at the bottom of the screen. All reports can be exported to Excel by clicking on the Excel icon on the top right-hand corner of the screen. The Investment Analysis Report displays the IRR, cash on cash, and equity multiples. From the reporting parameters, select the value to be used as the time zero value. We will select the DCF valuation set, which has the exit cap entry included. The report will display a summary of the cash flow, the time zero value, and resale, and the unlevered IRR, cash on cash, and equity multiples at the bottom. Click on the Return Sensitivities tab where several matrices are available for you to analyze the optimal investment opportunity. There are four valuation reports available by navigating the tabs at the top of the screen. The Sales Yield Matrix Report displays the values based on a range of discount rates and a range of cap rates. You could toggle between the valuations from the drop-down menu. 
The prospective present value report calculates the value in each year of the hold and includes the residual value and going in cap rate. The rent roll report provides a detailed summary of the rent roll, including tenant escalations every year. And the tenant roster report is a list of all tenants summarized in a list view. The occupancy cost and sales report displays the occupancy cost, tenant payables, and tenant sales. The rollover report displays the rollover assumptions included in the model. And the individual rollover assumptions tab displays the growth factor applied to the assumption so you can see the terms of a future lease in the year of rollover. The lease expiration report displays how much square footage is expiring every year. Click on the Initial Terms tab to view which tenants are expiring and understand the tenant exposure. Once you have identified which reports to include in your analysis, go to Settings and Package to create a report package where you can select the reports and click Create Package for Val to email you an Excel workbook that includes all your favorite reports in one consolidated package. Leveraging Val scenarios and sets allows you to explore an unlimited number of best and worst case what-if scenarios. Click Add Scenario and let's name this our Upside Scenario. Let's create a simple example and click on the RLA Set drop-down menu and create an Upside RLA Scenario. Update the renewal probability to 90% and enter a $35 per square foot market rent and click on Back to Scenario Manager. Click on the Scenario Comparison Report to display how the baseline compares with our upside scenario. Here we can select which data attributes to display on each access for comparison. In addition to the Scenario Comparison Report, toggle between scenarios to update results in all reports in VAL. Here is the baseline result on the cash flow report, and here is the upside result, noting the valuation in the header has also updated with the upside cash flow assumptions. This concludes the Rockport training video. Additional resources are available to ensure you are successful, such as training videos and dozens of tutorial videos. Or reach out to our award-winning support team at support at rockportval.com to schedule a training or receive support all at no additional cost. Thank you.